How you doing, folks? Welcome to another podcast. This is Mr. Green and Doom with you know movies it. and stuff. This is the Movies and Stuff podcast, and today is going to be just the stuff because we're not going to the movies, but we will be talking about the uh, the, stuff. the stuff, which is a nice, basically PC way of what I would have normally said, but it's a uh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it is the podcast that we're going to be discussing. Anything that's relative in the pop culture landscape that's going to be movies, TV shows, potentially comic books and whatnot, and franchises, television reviews, anything under the sun, which is why it was listed as the stuff, so it can give me a lot of leeway. There you go, that's the secret. But uh, in this particular episode, the pilot episode is going to be the, the birth of it is going to be listed in the CW universe, and uh, it should be noted that. Because of the randomness of the uh, the topics that could be on, the guests or the guest hosts may be a rotating cast, and Doom is here because he is a big advocate and fan and follower of the CW universe, or the, the, the Arrowverse as it's more commonly referred to. And we're going to talk about that in depth from the start, or at least the preceding shows with Smallville leading right on up to what we have today and uh so let's let's uh let's get this thing rolling doom with first off what's your your uh, not your relation to the Arrowverse but your your thoughts on the Arrowverse Let, let's kick it off with that okay my thoughts on the Arrowverse I'm glad I'm, I'm, I thought you never asked let me start off with this I prefer to refer to it as the Flashverse Okay, now well let let let's start with that. that question. <laughs> now I know why you like to refer to it as the Flash verse, but let, let's just go ahead and get this out. Why do you call it the Flash verse? Well, okay, we all know that these shows, uh, Super Girl. Well, you can't even really count Super Girl, but let's say the Flash we'll, we'll and Legends we'll Tomorrow. To that. We'll get to that. They spun off from the Arrow. I give you that. I understand why everybody's saying it's the Arrowverse, and you know, but like I said, in my opinion, if it wasn't for the Flash, DC and CW would not have the success. I'm sorry, the success that they have. In my opinion, I could be wrong, but the Flash was the catalyst that I think that that catapulted the CW DC universe. So, yes, you can technically say it is the Arrowverse, where it started, you know, those things started from the Arrow. But if I really wanted to be technical, I could call it the possible Smallville universe, because I could have sworn that DC started this off with Smallville, and we had it, Oliver Queen and the Green Arrow and all that stuff prior to the Arrow, quote-unquote. And, I, and, you know, most people hated that Oliver Queen, but that's another story. I, I didn't have a problem with him. Uh, there's, you know, I have I had a problem with this Oliver Queen because going from Smallville and being invested in the Smallville characters, and you know, then they just just, just totally changed it out when it came with the Arrow. I thought they were going to use the same Arrow from Smallville, but they said they decided to go a new way. So there, well, there you go, AKA the Arrowverse. Uh, but like I said, my personal opinion, I think The Flash is a better show. Nothing against The Arrow. The Arrow's, you know, the Arrow's cool, but The Flash is a better show. Legends of Tomorrow, I just say, let's just go with The Flash first. For my, for my. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, All right, well, let's let's <laughs> go back here a little bit. and. Uh, okay. Let, let's, uh, you brought up a couple of things in there, so we, we need to go ahead and address those at, at least bit by bit. Uh, the first thing being is that you, you kind of reference Smallville and that the the Arrowverse, if you will, could have potentially have been uh, spun off of that, which now the producers of Arrow and the subsequent shows have gone on record to essentially say that, we, as you said, and, and going, I guess I'm going deeper into it now, that they, they wanted to chart their own course uh, the quote being, you know, when developing the series, they they expressed the the idea to chart their own course and their own destiny and avoid any direct connections to the series Smallville, which featured his own Green Arrow. Now that now that was 
in essence, the first time that the masses got to see the Green Arrow and other uh, characters, some of which who haven't appeared on uh, in the Arrowverse yet. Well, some of them. Well, I shouldn't say that. I guess if you combine all the shows, a good deal of them have. But they had to. They had to. Yeah, the only Aquaman. one that they haven't tackled was Aquaman. Okay, I don't think okay. Aquaman has been tackled in the Arrowverse yet. But they did have a version of Aquaman in Smallville. They did have a version of Black Canary in, in Smallville, which they have a version of Black Canary in the Arrowverse. I mean, there are you know, but you know, uh, that, that's the only one that I think they haven't really tackled with Aquaman. Okay, now, now they did show several other characters that appeared in there, I, I guess, who was that, Doc, Dr. Fate. They tried to do an Aqu- uh, Aquaman uh, pilot, but what was then the, C- the, not the CW, the WB, but that, you know, that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, that basically has morphed into this, the CW, uh, so, it, mm-hmm. so it's all so it's all relative. But uh, the, getting back to the, the, the point of talk about the green arrow opposed to arrow and the arrow verse the end result is that they did not want to have any connectivity to smallville hence i know it was disappointing for some people particularly fans of the original smallville show uh but no there, there's no official connection there however smallville is kind of credited with uh, getting the interest behind having that type of television show launched would you agree with that? Oh, totally. Okay. Totally. Like I said, I mean, like I said, you know, um, I may have, you know, went about it in a, wrong, in a long, rhyme about way, but basically, uh, I agree with you because Smallville was, uh, I think you put it best, the litmus tape, or the, uh, the litmus test for um, when we was, you know, for the uh, the DC television universe. Because um, Smallville, as it eventually evolved into over the years, like you said, you know, they started integrating a lot of the DC Universe characters into it. And that was in the, the, the latter years. I would say maybe the last four, five seasons into Smallville. Um, prior to that, yeah, you know, they, you know, Smallville was basically confined to its own smallville universe the whole where we're not gonna <clears throat> you're never gonna see clark in the suit and you know they had their they had their their reasons for doing what they wanted to do but like i said towards the end of the the the, the series they started integrating so many dc characters into there that it became like wow what if they really did you know what if they did a show like you know uh, the Justice League, because they did an episode where they had the Justice Society yes. in Smallville, uh, which I thought was great. And, you know, everybody was just, you know, you had the Justice Society. You had the, uh, the them bringing in Oliver Queen <clears throat> Arrow as a as a main character in, in Smallville. Uh, they brought in Watchtower, you know. Uh, so, you know, for, for, for any comic book fans out there, we... You know, I got excited. I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but for for me as a comic book fan, I got excited. And then the season we get to the season finale of Smallville. The season finale, the season finale of Smallville. We actually get to see Clark fly. Someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Someone. <laughs> I mean, they, they didn't. They didn't leave you with a, just a clear shot of him in the suit cape and all that stuff but then but you got the unveil of the s and him off in the distance <laughs> so you, you got that yeah so i mean so, i guess I mean, it's better I than nothing they, they held true it's to better their, than nothing they held true to their uh what they said you're never going to see him in the suit you got a little bit of it but you never saw him head to toe in the the cape the, the boots the you know the whole nine yards you didn't you didn't get that But going back to something that you said a minute ago, okay, about that whole Smallville universe thing, right? About the, with the writers and what they wanted and what they didn't want. The funny thing about that is, as I was reading the other day, 
the small bill could be included in the Arrowverse now. Uh, yeah, I, I've heard that theory uh, based on the Arrowverse now, I guess, officially launching their their multiverse issues. Mm-hmm. Well, I shouldn't say issues. But Interesting. Officially, officially integrating or... their, yeah, the, 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 the idea that there's a multiverse and multiple Earths and multiple realities with multiple versions of these characters, they could, in theory, decide, okay, we're going to bring in uh, the Smallville version of it. now none of that's confirmed i don't you know i don't want to say that you know this is what they're doing or that you know that they're talking about it this is not it's rumor stuff. it's rumor but i know a lot of fans have been wanting to see tom welling make an appearance in some some way shape or form especially as superman uh, they, they wanted him to come back as the superman in this in the supergirl thing but we'll, we'll get to that uh in a moment uh okay so we we jump off of smallville which ran with Justin Hartley as uh, the Arrow. And Justin Hartley as Arrow, and that, and, and that ran for about uh, what ten ten seasons. Uh, did Smallville ended about 2011, and the following year we got Arrow, which is the recognized linchpin of the, the CW superhero universe, also known as the Arrowverse. Uh, Arrow began and aired its first episode on October 10th, 2012. Uh, for those that are looking for the original uh, appearance of the Arrow, or the Green Arrow, which looked more like Robin Hood at the time, that would be More Fun Comics 73. So that that's a, a long ways back and a big change in the character from that time until now. And uh, the TV show, uh, Arrow, has a, has a big change from what it was to what it is. Uh, we were just talking about this offline where the arrow in its initial phases was essentially you know you know a very grounded show he didn't have a lot of uh, uh super powered opposition for him at the time but that has certainly changed in the seasons that have gone on is that uh well i mean you you're probably like me in that you, your your view, viewership of the Arrow is, has been retroactive. I didn't look at the Arrow while it was uh, live. I, I kind of went back and watched some of them on Netflix at the time. So, well, I it? tried. I, I, I tried when it first came out. <laughs> I did try to watch it when it was live, and it was too slow. The, I, I mean, you know, the first season, um, like you said, you know, you got Oliver Queen, and he comes back to, you know, Star and C, and... Um, you know, he's been missing for, you know, for a certain amount of time. And then all of a sudden he's having these flashbacks to this island where he's been stranded, like looking like Tom Hanks missing Wilson. And it's, it's just really boring. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it was. You know, like, okay. We'll say that now. Or it was. He, he, didn't, he didn't particularly care for Arrow when it first kicked off and it didn't have enough superhero elements in there for you is it is well that the, that the, i'm gonna uh, say it was slow it was slow, it was slow. <laughs> okay didn't, didn't give you what even, you wanted even with smallville if you remember smallville had superhero elements in it but it really wasn't a superhero show you had clark Not initially of course, you know, it turned into Not initially it turned exactly Exactly, which is what happened with Arrow. I mean, I don't know if that was the original uh, concept of the writers, that they wanted to do it that way, because, okay, you know, you had the Arrow come back. Like I said, he's back in the city. Uh, he's been missing. He's trying to right these wrongs. He's fighting, you know, you know, fighting crime. Uh, but these criminals are regular criminals. Okay, I fall back on Arrow, kind of miss a few episodes. A few episodes turn into a few seasons. Um, <laughs> Flash comes out. Boom. I'm super, uber, uber, uber excited about the Flash, right? And then now we start doing crossovers. So I'm like, wow. Okay, well, maybe I need to watch the Flash. Maybe I need to watch the Arrow to see, you know, what's going on, you know, the continuity with these crossovers and stuff. And now I go back and I'm like, where the hell did all these superheroes come from? The last time I watched this show, you had this guy running around beating up mobsters, gangsters, thugs, whatever you want to call them, regular people, 
mm-hmm. regular people. Now I go back, you got Speedy and uh, I mean, it's just all types of heroes coming out of the woodwork. So I'm like, man, maybe I need to go back and watch the Arrow. I, I, I must have missed something exciting. So I, I will say that I, I will have to go back and watch Arrow. And, and um, finish out the other seasons. Uh, now, man, that's, now that's a lot. Now, they're, they're, they're about five yeah. seasons deep. As we're recording this, they're about five five seasons deep. So you know, let, let's uh, let's address this thing. I mean, what is it that the Flash presented to you that the Arrow didn't? I mean, because you're telling me that you basically got in on the Flash from from day one. Day one, yeah. Definitely. But you, but you, it, it took you a little while to get into the Arrow. I mean, and you've been and been watching kind of sporadically, even though you know you, you mm-hmm. are a fan and advocate of the, of the CW superhero lineup. Uh, but what, why was Flash different for you? Good question. Um, comic books, comic book fan. Flash was uh, it, it seemed to stay true to the comic book lore. First of all. Um, of course, you know, with, with, with any show or movie, the writers take their liberties with a lot of certain things. But for me, if you, if you can try to stay as close to the comic book as possible, that's great. Because my theory is the stories, the characters, all of that stuff is already built. It's already there. Don't change it. So with The Flash... Yeah, you know, not, and, and like I said, not to say that it, ha- it didn't happen with the arrow, but the arrow was slow, and so they may have done the same thing. I don't, I don't really know. I can't really speak on it because I would have to really go back and watch it and to really give it a, a full, honest critique. But with the Flash, like you asked me, I enjoyed it because it stayed true to the comic. I mean, the Flash had to shoot. Um, they, you know, they did the origin story. They did Iris. I mean, and, and, and each each episode was engaging. From the first season, it, it, it kept you uh, engaged with the action. With Arrow, is a lot darker. Flash is a lot colorful. You know, it's a lot brighter in in Central City. You know, uh, you know, you got a lot of um, the Flash with his red suit, and you know, Central City is always it's, it's always daytime. You know, for the most part, and um, with Arrow, it takes place at night and it's dark and a lot more grimy. It's a lot more, and I'm not not saying that I don't like grimy because I'm a Batman fan, but I just think um, in the later episodes they may have took some liberties and said, okay, well, the Flash is working. Let's start adding some more comic book characters into this. And and one of the things that threw me off with the Arrow at first was what they did with the characters, and I think. Um, they may have switched some of the characters around and, you know, combined certain characters. You know how a lot of TV shows do sometimes. I, 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 I'm the trying creative to, liberties that, right. the, uh, that the producers and writers yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Which exactly. is not uncommon. Like, they, they, they've done it kind of across the board, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but go ahead. Like uh, Arrow's sister. Mm-hmm. Arrow's sister in the TV show. I'm trying to remember what her name is. Um, but anyway, that, that that was one of the creative liberties that kind of threw me off. So if you notice in the TV show what they call her, uh, what is her name? It's at the top of it's at the tip of my tongue. Uh, Saying, uh, is it his, Speedy? His, his sister? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to I wanna say Speedy. Well, okay. Which which threw me off. Because you expect what, what Speedy you the uh the, the sidekick as listed in the comic. Exactly. Okay. Right. Exactly. Um, and I'm trying to look it up right now because, like I said, I don't really watch Arrow like that. And like I said, those, but, but you asked me why didn't I... It didn't catch you the, um, from, the, from the get-go. Is that Thea? Mm-hmm. Thea Queen? Yeah, yeah. Right, Thea, right. 
Okay. Thea, right, that's her name. I, I could, it was at the top of my tongue, right, Thea. But Thea is speed. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, more than, you know, you would know you, you're a comic book guy. Is that who speed is in the comic books? <laughs> Uh, not initially, but you know, here we are uh, in a in an era where there, there's been race and gender swaps to, to uh, certain characters uh, in the comics uh, as it related to TV and, and otherwise. I, I mean, here again, we, uh, I think we we had just talked about the James Olsen thing, opposed to being Jimmy Olsen, but right. as as talked about. They can get away with that because they have established a multiverse. So even though it's the character that we have heard of and seen in various forms of media in the comics and magazines and cartoons and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, they can always say, well, you know, that's the that's James Olsen on that earth. And right. no, and you not, know, DC is yeah, he's not the <laughs> head guy that we've known uh, from. Uh, all the, you know from all the years. Yeah, they did the, the, the original Superman. Yeah, yeah, they from the original. So there you go. And uh, as far as Speed is concerned, I mean, you know, I think everybody knows that it, even dating back to that that first appearance of of um, a Green Arrow, which is where Speedy appears. He he does he does appear alongside Green Arrow in more fun comics. That was in 1941. For anybody that's you know wanted to, wanted to know. Uh, and, right. and and their listings were basically the same. You know that that was, and I'm getting I'm going to jump out of the CW talk for a second. That was around the era where a lot of comic book, uh, comic book characters were being introduced or introducing sidekicks. Sidekicks. Sidekicks were like the, the thing to have. Captain America had to have Bucky's. Uh, you know, Batman had of course Robin is is the archetype, and everybody else underneath that had to have some form of sidekick. So you know, just because right. we wanted. And then, you know, the the, large, the, the the long and short of that is that they wanted to make sure that kids had somebody relative to identify with. That's that's the only purpose right. that the sidekick serves. So and, it, and, and, the point, and the point that I was making is, if you have been a comic book fan, and then you watched that first episode of Arrow, and then they showed Thea, his sister, as being called Speed, Automatically, you're like, okay, there's no costumes going on. I don't know what they're doing. He's going around beating up people. I don't know why. We keep seeing these flashbacks that look like, you know, Batman Returns. And, and, and now you're saying that Speedy, who's supposed to be a, a guy, Roy Harper, you know what I'm saying? You know, we all know, you know Roy yes. Harper, the Red Arrow. Yeah. It's speedy, you know. He was his kind, of, but you know, and like but I said, there's nothing wrong with that because name. eventually, yeah, eventually we get to that. They they did bring in Roy, and they did bring in the character, the Red Arrow. So, but I missed that. I didn't get to that point. You know what I'm saying? So I had already been law. I had I had already you know dropped. He, he had logged out by then. He had logged out of out of Arrow at that point. So you look, anybody that's we, listening to this, we're yeah. not saying that Arrow was a bad show or anything like that. Because I know it might come off. Arrow bashing. It's, you know, it's not arrow bashing, but you know, I, I had him on because he was a huge fan of the Flash, and that kind of retroactively made him uh, watch a lot of these shows, um, uh, Arrow included. But he hasn't gone through all five seasons worth of it, so you know. And I, and I just nah, want to get the, the honest opinion about why Arrow didn't catch him off the off the the rip, and Flash did. So. But anyway, we know what Arrow did do for you is that it gave a backdoor pilot essentially to the Flash. And I know you look at the Flash as more of a linchpin to the Arrowverse than Arrow is, even though <laughs> Arrow is the the root of all of it. But uh, Flash has been far more engaging for you and, may, and pretty much the catalyst of the superhero element and the supervillain element of the universe that they are now creating the CW. Yeah. The CW. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and that's what I was and that's what I was getting at where as to when you ask me about why would I say the Flash verse as opposed to the Arrow verse. And it's not necessarily, you know, bashing the arrow or anything like that, but you just hit it. You just hit the nail on the head. The Flash has been the centerpiece for 
bringing the rest of these shows together in the CW universe. Granted, like you said, you had Barry Allen show up in the Arrow, and from Barry Allen being on the Arrow, you spun off and you got Barry Allen as the Flash on his own TV show. From the Flash, you go to his rogues, and from his rogues, you got Heatwave and Let It Start, a.k.a. Captain Cold, which wind up spinning off into DC Legends of Tomorrow as they became part of the team for the Legends, which brings you into a whole nother gallery of superheroes introduced from the Legends. So, yes, Arrow is the beginning, and Barry came from the Arrow, but everything else came from the Flash. Okay, so let's go on to the Flash. That we got, we got the Flash, which... The television show began in 2014. That first aired on October 7th of that year. Uh, for anybody interested in the comics version of that, uh, the original Flash appeared in Flash Comics number one. That was the one that looked more like Mercury, which uh, does appear in the Flash TV series. The modern Flash, as we know him today, uh, first appeared in Showcase number four. So, uh, going into the the Arrowverse version of the Flash, we we have uh, a pretty heralded uh, version of, of this. I don't think that you have a lot of fans who, who crapped on it. I think it was a, a very positive review across the board. So much, in fact, that when Flash was announced, and, and I'm getting into the theatrical versions now, that when Flash was announced to uh, appear in the upcoming Justice League movie, you had people legitimately mad that, <laughs> that the, uh, the actor... Yeah. Who plays the Flash um, in the uh, television show, not appearing yeah. as the Flash in the movie, or at least they they wanted him to uh, appear as the Flash in the movie, which you know kind of, I guess that kind of sucks for him if for the payday. But you know, other than that, <laughs> I, I mean, he, I guess he was doing a good job <laughs> for people to have uh, took it uh, that that seriously and, and by the way the, the actor uh, Grant Justin so a lot of people wanted him and, and that version of the Flash to appear in the in the movie in the, uh, in the movies that's coming up I should say so well you know I'm going to start with that what, what did you even think about that when did you did you hear about that when people were saying oh man I wish Justin uh, Grant would uh, be in the in the Justice League movie? I, I, I was one of those you were? Uh, I was definitely. I, I yeah. I I I I I was guilty of that because okay, so I had, you have against you know, the, become. I, I can't pronounce. I think it, Isra Isra Miller. I think this, this guy's. If I'm pronouncing yeah. it wrong, you know, don't don't jump on me. But Miller, <laughs> Isra Ezra. Miller. He, he's, he's Ezra. Playing, Ezra. Okay, so he's got us playing mm-hmm. the Flash in in the uh, the movie. So, well, what was the big beef, man? Why why? Uh, you know, if you're going to speak for the, the, the people at this particular point, what, what was the problem? Why, why weren't you willing to give this new guy a shot? Initially. Uh, I'm, not saying that I, I'm not saying that I wasn't willing to give him a shot. I just felt that Grant Gustin had did such a phenomenal job as bringing the Barry Allen character um, just to the forefront. You know, I mean, he He's done a, a wonderful job at playing Barry Allen in The Flash. Uh, whereas Ezra, I haven't really seen much of Ezra as The Flash, except for that brief moment that we got in that movie that sucked. Um, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> we're not going to talk about uh, with the Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice right now. Bruce! I mean, we, we, could, we could talk about it. <laughs> You can, you can address it in a, a, a second word, of, but yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get into that one uh, a little bit later <laughs> on. And, and I and before I even go into that, I will go on record to say that I didn't think it was as bad as people tried to make it out to be. <laughs> it, it, but I certainly don't hey, think it lived if you got any hype. sound effects, I need to hear a boo right now. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I certainly don't think it lived up to the hype, and I'll explain that in a, in a later edition. And while I'm on the, the uh, subject, for anybody that's looking to uh, follow uh, the, the post that Doom likes to make as it relates to that, he does do it on Facebook, on, on Fanboys TV. He does uh, put up a lot of 
different articles and whatnot as it relates to uh, shows and news clippings. Yeah, and comics, TV, and comics, you know, anything that's going on. I try to keep everybody, you know, um, anybody that wants to follow, follow the page, um, you know, get, you know, come to the group and, you know, like you said, anything comic book related, anything uh, DC, Marvel, uh, I try to just, you know, keep it posted and then keep everybody abreast on the changes that's coming up with these um, MC universes and the DC universe. <clears throat> okay, and also uh, want to put out for uh, the movies and stuff Facebook page, which uh, I do handle on on occasion, which is basically a lot of different posts and factoids about uh, movies and things that have that have gone on through the, the years. I uh, found a really good clip uh, for for you classic movie fans out there, the movie Airplane, and how how it got a huge chunk of its dialogue from the uh, 1957 movie Zero Hour. But that's neither here nor there. We, we'll, we'll go off into those things. Uh, mm. A little bit, a little bit later. Uh, okay, so Flash, Flash, it is. A, you, you should go in there and look at the, the clip. It's, it's really, it's funny. Uh, but, but they haven't. That wasn't a secret, you know. They, I, I'm not trying to imply that they stole the stuff, but that's where they parodied it from. That, or at least that was a good chunk of the parody. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, Flash. So Flash was a uh, was a hit with you, and certainly uh, with with a lot of the the uh, fans out there but now here comes the twist and that Supergirl which technically speaking was not part of the Arrowverse uh, initially originally originally it's part of the Arrowverse somewhat by default because Supergirl aired on an entirely different network and the president I don't know if she's still the president of CBS at the time uh, her quote was, and, and speaking of Arrow and The Flash, those two shows are on a different network, so I think we'll keep Supergirl to ourselves for a while. Now, that was the quote as as it related to people asking, what's the likelihood of, of seeing a crossover? Because everybody knew that it was essentially the same production company and it was produced by the, by the same people, but it landed on a different network and... and the question was up in the air, like, okay, well, are we going to be able to see a Flash on there? Are we going to be able to see an Arrow appear on Supergirl? And now we want to rotate back that Supergirl came out the following year of the debut of the Flash. Flash was in 2014. Supergirl came out 2015, uh, beginning on October 26th of that year. The first unofficial appearance of Supergirl is in Superman 123. And I want to make note that that Supergirl that is in that comic is not the Supergirl that we know today. It was a, uh, it was kind of, a, if we were talking in TV terms, that would be considered a backdoor pilot for Supergirl comics later on. Uh, it was the Supergirl that appears in there, although she looks the same, was basically a wish by Jimmy Olsen, and that created that. That uh, that particular version of Supergirl, which was the female duplicate or doppelganger of Superman, the actual Supergirl as we know her today appeared in Action Comics the following year in, in issue 252, and of course Supergirl has gone through numerous changes in her origin story and been killed off and brought back and does everything under the sun. You said, <laughs> oh, you said Superman? You said Superman had been killed off and brought? Oh, Supergirl! Uh, Supergirl! Oh, oh, DC. Supergirl. DC, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, you're right, DC, they kill off and bring back everybody, but okay. Yes, yes they do, they, they, they do have a habit of doing that, let's, let's just go ahead and establish that for the, I mean, I know the comic book fans out there know that, uh, the death isn't permanent if you're a Superman or Supergirl or something like that, they, they've, they've gone away, they've come back, and they've done it a, a number of times. But as it is... Uh, right. remember that time that, the, remember that time that Robin got killed and was dead? Um, oh, he's the Red Hood now. Jason I mean, Todd. Sorry. I yeah. mean, not the Red Hood. The, the, the... <laughs> well, yeah, he was, yeah, he 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 came back as the Hood. He he, he took the moniker yeah. of the Red Hood, uh, which which is a good animated movie, by the way. I'm sure we'll cover that uh, at some point. Uh, but yeah, we we have Supergirl who who's come back in many different incarnations. One of which was Laura Vandervoort in uh, 2007 on Smallville. But we know Melissa Noyce is Supergirl today. And which also, right. which, you know, for for you uh, fans out there, got the 
the original Supergirl, Helen Slater, playing the mother on the series. So that's like a little little nod. Easter people. egg. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not hidden, <laughs> but but you know it's a, yeah. a little nod to to the fans. And of course, Van Der Voot appeared on Supergirl as Indigo as a villain. So even though she didn't come back as a hero, she came back as a villain and Indigo slash Brainiac Eight. Um, I did watch Supergirl. Uh, I went through that entire season. I, I, I enjoyed the series. I, I caught some of uh, the Flash at the same time. So, so I did see the uh, crossover, which was the, the world's world's finest episode, and I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the entire build of Supergirl that that they got to. Uh, not so much when they flipped over to the CW, but that you know that's me. Uh, what were your thoughts on Supergirl? When uh, it began on the CW, um, on, excuse me, on the CBS CBS network, uh, I was interested to see the show and to see how they were going to do it. I was hoping that they would actually do some crossover episodes with the Flash. Would, would they ultimately? And did they, ultimately, they did get. Yeah, to, they did. But at first, while, at first, yeah. I wasn't sure how they were going to do it. You know, I was like, I wasn't uh, either. It would be great if they could, but there are two different networks. I don't know how that would work out, even though the networks are sort of related. But it would be great. And they did it. And when they did it, I was like, awesome. This is great. This is really freaking great. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to catch the crossover episodes between uh, Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, and Legends of Tomorrow, where they did the... the, uh, yeah, Invasion, right, the big crossover episode. I think as far as TV goes, I don't know if that's ever been done before. But, you know, kudos to Marvel because I will say that, you know, Marvel has kicked a fire in DC's ass to try <laughs> to get something going. Because whatever they're doing with those movies, that suck. But we're not going to talk about those. They're doing a great job with the TV shows. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you... you... You're a far bigger fan of the crossover and the uh, the build from one thing to the next in the television universe than you are DC's. Oh, universe. definitely, definitely. Okay. Because what they with because like me and you have discussed before. Um, the problem is Marvel has had years to develop um, this buildup of characters and origins and. Uh, you, you know, and just, you know, being connected to these characters. Whereas DC is trying to do the same thing with their, you know, with their cinematic universe. But I think with their television universe, they've accomplished that. Because even though, like we said, it did start with Arrow, but a lot of those characters, correct me, somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect. But I do think that the Flash has been, you know, the, where the majority of their characters has come from. And like I said, the Flash has done, has stayed true to the comics for the most part. With, like we said, with some liberty. So as a comic book fan, you can follow that. And then when you get into, you know, the, the spinoffs and, you know, and everything, they, it was a buildup. You know, you had two seasons of Arrow, uh, a season of Flash, a season of... Supergirl, and I'm just talking about before the next one started. I'm, you know, of course, they've all got more seasons, but I think you had two seasons of Arrow, then you had The Flash. Then I think by the second season of Flash, you had the first season of Supergirl. Yeah. I think. Basically, yeah. That's, by, it, by season yeah. two of Flash, Supergirl was kicking off. Right. And then by the time Supergirl, by the, Supergirl, the first season of Supergirl was kicking off, then you had the Legends of Tomorrow about to, you know, about to pop off. So there's your buildup. You know, you you had a you know, like you say, you had a few seasons. You know, to to get invested into the Arrow, to 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 kick off the universe. Then you brought in Barry Allen. Now you're expanding your universe. You're going from this dark city to this bright city. <laughs> you know, and uh, and Legends of Tomorrow. We haven't talked anything really about the Legends. I like the Legends. Well, we haven't gotten there we, we yet. Yeah, I like the legends. I, I know yeah, when you know when they introduced the legends, I was, you know, um, coming from Supergirl. I said, you know, Supergirl is good, and then here comes this other show, Legends. Like, what are they gonna do, man? I, you know, like, 
who's going to be in this show? Who are these people? Who the hell are the legends? I had well, no idea. I didn't either. But, you know, now, now let me rewind this back. You know, this, this is a tad uh, and get back to the, the Supergirl TV show, which, which again, you know, by, by all accounts, technically wasn't part of the hour. It's like, you know, that, that was kind of adopted because of the cancellation off of CBS, uh, which which did put the show in limbo for, you know, a, a brief period of time. People were wondering whether it was going to uh, return uh, in any shape, way, or form. It did, in fact, return to television, but it returned to uh, the CW, which did constitute some changes as far as the production and the budget was concerned. Uh, not just the production and the budget, but it constituted some changes as related to just the the show in general, which I didn't necessarily see coming. Uh, we had the introduction of, Super, of Superman's arch enemies, mother and sister, with Lillian Luthor and uh, I forget the the mom's name is Alina. Uh, I might have oh, no, okay. Yeah. Lena's, the, Lena's the, the the daughter. Lillian is the mother. Which of course, you know, I, I, it, they they just made it out like. Uh, being evil is in their DNA. I, I didn't. I didn't really get that. Uh, Hank Henshaw, which in Look. the comic is a little bit different. Of course, we addressed uh, James Olsen, who is uh, uh, different than the the Jimmy Olsen character, who for whatever reason decided that hey, I got to be a fighter too, and became the Guardian in season two. Uh, Alex comes out the closet and, and, and is not introduced oh, as boy. a character. And uh, you know, you got the the various aliens that pop in and out on a day-to-day -day basis uh, per episode. And, of course, we we got to say that it should be addressed that Supergirl, although on the same network now, still is a universe apart as her Earth is a different Earth than the Arrow and the Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. So she kind of sits on her own, even though they, right. in, in as it related to that invasion episode they have basically shown you that if we have to get it we can and they have <laughs> and, and they have they gotta you know just, just because it was aliens and we need extra help so let's go get her and, uh, so that that's a lot that, that's a lot you know it just in the uh the change i, I felt like a, going into season two with supergirl they they i'm not saying that all the changes were bad let's 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 get that out but uh it felt to me as if they took a swift detour from what they were originally planning. How, what as same, far as the Supergirl. As far as the Supergirl, as far as the plot lines. And, uh, and, uh, and again, I think they listen to the fans. I think they what, listen what, to the fans like they should have from day one. <laughs> what? what? Uh, okay, now uh, I'm going to uh, address two things on there that, I, that gave me that impression. One, the whole deal with... Uh, building up the relationship between uh, James Olsen and Kara only to have that rug yanked out <laughs> the, the second season two kicked off and it was like oh, what, what, what was all that for why why did we go through all of this to just pull that away the, wait 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 you, you missed it okay right there was the whole thing with James and Kara and then it went from what what's the other guy's name um Talking about the one that for, had the crush uh, got, on her. Yeah, the one that had the crush on her, and then you know, so you had that freaky little love triangle going on. Yeah, uh, which is weird. But 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 and then, that in the bud, you know, pretty much season one, they they kind of okay, this isn't going to happen. I I like you, but I like you as a friend, and, and you know, and I was fine with all that because we knew, according to season one at least, we knew that that was uh, a losing battle for him because she she had her eyes on somebody else. Uh, <clears throat> and that but was that wasn't as big of, as big of a problem for me as the Guardian. That seemed just ridiculous. I that. <laughs> that, that, that came out of nowhere. So, I was like, and and basically because so I, I'm Jimmy's tired of getting crime fighter. Yeah, I was, I'm basically tired of getting my ass kicked. I want to fight crime too. Yeah, so he just comes out of the blue, and not just does he come out of the blue, but the dude agrees to it. He's like, when agrees to give him a suit. I don't know. So you know, and and again, I'm not I'm not knocking the the show 
what I am saying, it seems to me that that shift from CVS to the CW on the surface created the necessity to change stuff around. Like we can't, for whatever reason, we can't do the, what we were planning to do anymore, so let's fix it. That's what it felt like to me. And I wish that I had, you know, somebody that could verify, you know, so somebody that was inside or writing or something like that that could say that's exactly what happened or no, that's not what we did. You know, I wish that, that I could get that. And maybe we will at some point. But what say you? I mean, what, what did you feel about the changes? Because when I when I go back and I'm and, and I'm like you in some of these things, I'm being retroactive and looking, you know, watching episodes of The Flash, mm-hmm. watching episodes of Arrow. But by all accounts, when I look at that, anything that came in to those shows feels organic to me. It doesn't feel like it came out of the blue, and it doesn't feel like okay, we got to change this real quick. And even when they did change, like it was it, rushed. When, yeah, it didn't like feel it was rushed. rushed and, exactly. Yeah. And even with the, no, the, I, they, they I had agree a quick change. And, and okay, well, I'll use the Flash. Flash may technically have had a, a change in characters suddenly, but it was a change in characters in relation to a time paradox. So it fit. Yeah. Right. It's again DC and those wonderful skates. They escape uh, clauses, you know, between the multiple Earths and the time travel. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. You can, but uh, but uh, but I'm just saying it does. And to me, but, yeah, it, it does like That was a rush, it, but it sticks. I, and see, that's what I and that's what I was saying because of the Flash. No matter what they do. It it, it 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 all seems to make sense because for one, if you're a comic book fan and you're a fan of the Flash, you're well aware of Flashpoint, which is a big story arc, you know. And like I said, I, I, I once again I refer to it as the Flashverse again because most of the stuff that takes place in this universe, television universe, it all sometimes revolves around the Flash. Because even when you go, and I know we, I know you know, not trying to, uh, to 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 escape off, but when you get into the bridging of Supergirl and the CW universe, it was Barry, because Barry has the capability of going from one Earth to another Earth, or yes. going from one time to another time. You know, the, like I said, time travel, earth travel, whatever you want to, dimension travel, whatever you want to call it. So, to me, the glue is Flash. And because of those clauses, it, no, they haven't put anything in there that seems out of place to me. Now, there's millions of comic book fans out there that might just totally disagree with me and say, oh, this guy is stupid, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's cool. But to me, when I watch the show, like you said, with the Flash, it seems like a great continuity. The only thing that I did have a problem with in Supergirl was when it went from CBS to the CW is the fact that they took out uh, Cat, Cat Grant. She was there for, for a couple of... And I actually yes, happened she, to she like the relationship that Cat and Kara had with each other. It... It, 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 you know, I guess it was maybe too Superman-ish. Well, well, I think it was a uh, a monetary thing because them them leaving CW yeah. to, to um, leave us here. Le- them leaving CBS to go to CW did cut the budget. So I think that was mainly an issue of monetary value, opposed to whether they wanted to keep her there or not. Because uh, I, right. cause but, I believe but, that. But I'm saying with that. It, to answer your question, not to cut you off, to, to answer your question is, with Supergirl, those were some of the things that I did have an issue with. But those were mo- mainly writer things because, you know, you have a story that's, to, like we were talking about this love triangle. You had Jimmy Olsen and then, what is that guy's name? <laughs> it's talking, about the, talking about his character name or the, the actor? No, the, the 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 character, her, the guy that she works with, that had a crush on her. It, it, James. Uh, he, oh, it's Win. Win Scott. Win. Yeah. Win. Yeah, yeah. That's the guy that had a crush. Yes. On. Right. But, so yeah, so he was. He had that love triangle between Win and 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 Kara and, and, and James and, and I didn't Kara. have a problem with it. And that. then you bring in Cat, 
and you had Cat's son come in, and he had an interest in Kara. So the only problem that, like I said, as far as with Supergirl, it, it was very love-related, if that makes sense. It's not, it's it, 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 it centered around a lot of different types of relationships. You also had the relationship, like you mentioned, with uh, her sister. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, you know, whereas in The Flash, the only relationships that you're really going to get into is the relationship between Barry and Iris. You may have a couple of side relationships there where Joe may have a relationship, but Joe's main thing is to protect uh, his children, which are Wally, Barry, and Iris. That's the relationship there. You have the relationship, uh, like I said, but... It, you know, Supergirl, it, it, it revolved around that, and that's the only really problem I had. It can get more in-depth into um, the superhero aspect of the show, like The Flash does. You know, get, let me get more let me get more action. Let me get more villains. Let me get... But, but I guess um, it's the Superman thing. I mean, it's, maybe it's hard to write for Kara because, I mean, how many villains can you put against Supergirl? I mean, I don't know. That, that could legitimately be perceived as a threat. Yeah. I mean, you know that that is the thing, and then when you introduce Superman, I like that makes it worse. <laughs> but, which I which I didn't, you know. Who can they not defeat? Yeah, that that that's exactly the point. Now I will say this before I move on out to uh, Legends of Tomorrow. I will say I thought they did a good job season one, and kind of I mean it it was corny, but at least it worked. And that we have to find a way that Superman can't be here. And he can't help you, you know. So they found ways to kind of work around that, even when it was a life-threatening Earth, you know, possibly in danger. We need Superman. We we should have Superman, but something happens, you know. He's off a galaxy away. We we can't find him, or you know, some, something along those lines <laughs> happened to where he was unavailable. Now they they changed that when they got into. Season two, and uh, they when they brought him in, they did bring in Superman. Yeah. But, it, but again, like, what what do you present against this guy? Is Superman? How, how does he and uh, Supergirl not survive whatever it is that they're up against? How do they not get? You know, how do they not come through? How do they not defeat the threat? Superman's hard enough to. How do you make it believable? Home. Yeah, you know, he, he's. Every once in a while, they, they had a character that came up that did present a viable threat. I thought Indigo was a viable threat. I thought the uh, some of the escapees of, of the Phantom Zone were presented as a viable threat. Those things made sense to me. And that was a very linear story, and I, I got it. I didn't necessarily have a problem with the relationships other than, again, I thought that they, whatever story that they were trying to tell in season one, by the time they got to season two, it's like, all right, just screw it. Let's start over. And they just decided to Well, it over. makes sense. Because by the time you get to season two, now you've, you've, you've entered them into the CW universe. The CCW universe, right? So, now we, we've broken down the relationship aspect of the show from the writer's standpoint. Like I said, Supergirl in my aspect, and, and, and from my point of view, it, it, it deals with more, uh, how should I say, grounded, uh, human-like feelings. Yeah. With you know what I'm saying? With the like I said, with the with the boyfriend and girlfriend, girlfriend, you know, the, the the those mutual relationships. You don't get a lot of those in the other shows. You know what I'm saying? So that has it's an appeal. I guess that is written like that to appeal to a more uh, feminine audience. I would guess so. You have to have a more because of it, you know the storylines are more emotional. That that's what I'm saying. Okay. You know, you, like you know, Kara's and you know, like I said, with Kara being in that love. Oh, I like Jimmy, but then I like this guy, and oh, and this guy, he's so cute. It, 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 that, yeah. That's girl stuff. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's 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 girl stuff. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Of course, the Flash. When you know, it, it's funny because I was watching some uh, some previews, and they kept calling. Uh, uh, Barry, emo Barry from the future because he's all emotional and crying because Iris is dead. But, you know, you know, but hardcore comic characters, you know, we don't, you know, we live to see the fight. You know, yeah. like, what's the fight? You know, but I'm getting off topic. But what I was trying to get to is what you were saying about as far as the threats. And now, the threats. 
aliens. The only thing that can play a viable threat to a Superman or a Supergirl is not a human threat, like a Lex Luthor, because you know he's going to come, but another alien threat, because Superman and Supergirl are aliens. So the only way that you can constantly keep having these conflicts that can possibly put this alien, Superman slash Supergirl, in danger is to have another alien come in. Because you don't know what this alien strengths are. On on a physical level. Sense to me. Yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now as far as that's an overall threat, now they you know, because they in their universe they've established the Luthers that like all of them are practically geniuses. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> Look, <laughs> and, and here again, now I said it earlier, it's like they they the show essentially makes you believe like okay this is just in the dna it's either you know if you're a loser or you're a genius now i believe the, the daughter i think is a stepdaughter but still she's a genius you know <laughs> you know that mm-hmm. all of them are like ridiculously smart and you know now i don't remember whether she my favorite my favorite luther is from smallville i like the smallville lex luther well uh, yeah, I mean, he... he as far as TV little... universe is concerned. As far as TV universe is concerned. Okay. Let me clear that up. Okay. <laughs> and he was a good Luther. You know, he, he played a he played a great role. You know, even down to being willing to shave his head, which most people aren't willing to do when they take the character on. Very few of them have done it. Uh, it's, you know, they, they do the ball wig or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's... They have portrayed the Luthers as the uh, mental equivalent to Superman or Supergirl, quote in this in this uh, reality, uh, that that is what leverages things out as far as that is concerned. But okay, so we've done enough of Supergirl. Supergirl has, it, it has been a reasonable show. I didn't necessarily care for the the flip around of, from one network to the next in terms of storyline. But ask me anybody else that has any uh, complaints or. Uh, like it, didn't like it, you know, leave it in the comments below or wherever you happen to be listening to this. Uh, but uh, now, Legends of Tomorrow, which was a spin directly from The Flash, which I guess goes back to kind of support your uh, point of Flash being one of the major linchpins of of the uh, the, the Arrowverse. The Arrowverse. CW, yeah, the, or the CW Universe. Uh, that show did begin on uh, the the following October after Supergirl, so it's all you know, it's all fall season releases, and uh, that was in 2016. The show began on October 13th, and you got DC's Legends of Tomorrow, or just Legends of Tomorrow, whichever you happen to prefer. And so now you've gone from having television shows which have focused and centered on one primary character, as in Arrow, as in Flash, as in Supergirl. So now you have a group, which I guess opens mm-hmm. up the, the door for uh, some more some characters. Fun, yeah, mm-hmm. more characters and some fun things to go on there. And, and uh, the, the roll call you have, you got Firestorm, Adam, Rip Hunter, the White Canary, um, uh, Hawk Girl, Hawk Man, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Heat Wave, Captain Cole, uh, Vixen. Vixen. Steel. Those are the, the the primary characters, and of course, you know with that. You got you've got E. Barthon, um, which is Reverse Flash. Uh, well, the Legion of Doom. Let's just put it that that the, 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 that's where the Legion of Doom came from. The Legion of Doom came from Legends of Tomorrow, okay. which is uh, Reverse Flash, uh, Malcolm, um, and Damian Dark. Okay. So, the uh, the Legends of Tomorrow show, which uh, which again you got the group there. What have you felt about this this program thus far? And I have to, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the fact that you know if you branching off, this one has a little bit of a, a, a secondary branch, as does Arrow and the Flash with Vixen, because Vixen has her own kind of little mini mini animated series which comes on CWC which is a very easy watch for anybody that hasn't watched it if, if you haven't checked it out if you haven't even heard of it 
I'll, I'm going to say go ahead and uh, hit CW seed up, and you should see Vixen. And as I said, it's a very easy watch. The episodes are like two or three minutes long. And at the end of the season, they just compile them all, and which basically comes down to about 20, 25 minutes in total. So you can see everything all at once. It, it basically looks like a, a one-off cartoon. Uh, pretty fun to look at. And they have integrated the characters from all of the shows, minus Supergirl, mm-hmm. into that uh, CWC CWC yeah, in that show, you yeah, you got the Flash, you got the Arrow, you got Cisco. So all of the they've taken your TV universe characters and put them into an animated universe with Vixen, which is pretty pretty cool and pretty interesting. Which doesn't line up with any of the other DC animations, but you know it's just just it's, it, I think. I don't. I'm not sure. If, I guess it still maintains its own universe there, even though it's in the animated universe. Yeah, I, I but think. Vixen is a very good show. I, I, I actually like Vixen. Um, I actually like the character that plays her on Legends of Tomorrow. She does a good job. I like the the fact that um, with Legends of Tomorrow you get a lot of action. Like I said, for you comic book hardcore comic book fans out there that like action. That's where Legends of Tomorrow comes in. You know, you every episode is, you know, they, they're fighting something. They're time traveling. Once again, you see that time travel. But these guys have a time travel spaceship, which is even more. <laughs> <laughs> which gives so, them more you know, ways like to I get said, out of stuff. <laughs> as of we have happens. evolved, yes, as we have evolved in this conversation to talking about time travel and spaceships, let's go back to the beginning of the conversation where we talked about a guy who comes back from being shipwrecked to beat (laughs) up people who have done his town wrong Mm -hmm. to spaceships and time travel. Well, well, now, didn't you say that within that Uh, crossover miniseries, he basically addressed that. You know, he, he, he... he more or less yes, he did. He did. I, he's not the elephant in the room, but he sticks out like a sore thumb. Like everybody else here has something that I don't. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and that more or less what he's what he's saying is like, you know, I started he off like this, and <laughs> I, I wound up going from fighting uh, criminals and technology to metahumans to now dealing with aliens. And you know, how do I fit into that? Right. You, you, yeah, that's, that's crazy. I mean, but look, man, if you want to talk about anybody that does it best, Bruce Wayne. Uh, you know. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to lie. That's one of my favorites because uh, I'm waiting to see him done properly. You know, they keep changing stuff with movies and all that stuff, but Bruce Wayne is the ultimate badass because this dude has no super powers, but can go toe-to-toe with any of the worst villains out there. Uh, Who yeah. else can do that? <laughs> they, they pretty much built him up to be the guy, you know, as far as DC lore is concerned. You know, Batman is, is he's Batman, uh, which I'm glad you brought that up before I, you know, I get back to Legends of Tomorrow because I know at some point uh, I saw somebody had uh, said something along the lines like, yeah, I think they're going to have Batman appear in the, in the CW universe. I'm like, okay. Let, let's go ahead and address that. I did that. hear that. I, I, no, I did hear that. I, I, I heard that, but, you know, in relation to how I heard it illustrated, like that is a unconfirmed rumor, and there's really no, no meat to that at this point. I wouldn't put a lot of stock into that as so long as Gotham is on the air. Uh, that, that That's me. Now, I could be wrong, but it, I remember Fox essentially saying that we own all rights as it relates to Batman and Batman related uh, characters slash materials uh, for television. They don't own that for theatrical release, but as far as television, live action. If you're doing animated, mm-hmm. they could do Batman. If they do, if you're doing a theatrical release, you could do Batman. But uh, it's but you more or less got to get permission from Fox if you're going to use um, Which, Batman on TV. Yeah. Because they need, you know, yeah. that they they'd have to like sublease the character to somebody else. And the, and the reason that this person started uh, stated this rumor is because of an off comment 
that happened on the Supergirl episode. I think it's my cousin uh, teamed up with a vigilante once, got a lot of a lot of gadgets and a bad attitude, or something along those lines. That ain't enough. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's, that's exactly. That's like that. Well, you I'm know, sorry, that's not enough to say that. Yeah, Batman's coming. You know, because people have been I'm a, had that rumor for Smallville for I, years, and he ain't never showed yeah. up that show. <laughs> people went to town with, with that. I think that's just a loophole. It leaves you open, sort of like what Marvel did in Ant Man before they had the rights to use Spider Man. Yeah, okay. They now, referenced him they referenced as a that guy who calls up. <laughs> yes. But because they referenced him, when they did get the license to use him, they were able to say, oh, this is when we referenced him. Yeah, they, they could. You know? And, and you, you're right. Now, it, it could be that CW will fork out the money and get Batman in there. That, that's possible. Now, considering that they don't... But I'm with you. I don't see it happening no time soon. Yeah, I was going to say, considering which, that they which, don't necessarily which, have the money, you know, because everything that they're saying, like every dime that they got going to the effects and, the, and the paying the cast and the crew and all that stuff like that. So I don't, I don't see where this extra cash is going to come from to be like, all right, we got to license out Batman. I think what they're doing is they're building up, and I could be wrong, but they're building up the universe to create more revenue. And they've got a lot more steam behind them in their universe than Fox has with Gotham. I mean, I watched the first season of Gotham, and I was like, I I can't even do it. Um, (laughs) I don't know where they're going with it. I mean, I was cool with it at first. Like, oh, man, this is going to be kind of cool. You get to see Bruce Wayne as a kid, but it's boring. It's it's just boring. I'm not a fan of (laughs) prequel stuff because, in, in my view, because I am a comic book reader, None of the stuff that takes place on the on TV prequels mean anything to me, and that you know, and that's me because you're being retroactive, and now you're trying to introduce all these characters, which basically goes directly against any origin story that they have written down uh, within the comics. Because now you're saying that oh, well, okay, Penguin didn't start off this way; he actually was hustling as a 14 year old in you know clubs or whatever the heck that's going on, you know. And then I can understand them saying that we're going to make the story about Gordon and all this stuff. And I don't want to get off talking about Gotham right now, but I, I get what they were trying to do. And, and it is TV and they can take their creative liberties and they can go into a different route. But I, I've never been a real fan of that, which is a large part why I, I looked at Smallville for a while, but then I kind of veered off of it. So anyway, this Legends of Tomorrow, you, you, yeah. you do enjoy the show. You, you think that, that the concept is good and they have maintained the integrity of the DC television universe, that that's a fair statement to say. Yeah, I, I think what Legends of Tomorrow brings to the DC television universe is the capability to add those other characters in. Because um, with The Flash, like I said, you have the uh, Cisco and Barry with the capabilities to travel from different universes and different times, but also you have that same capability in Legends of Tomorrow, which pretty much happens every episode yeah. because they're set inside of a time machine, you know, a spaceship. A spaceship with so time travel that capability. Gives them the, yeah, that gives them the creative freedom to bring in any character from the DC universe that they have access to into that show. And then from that show, it can branch out into the other shows. So uh, Legends of Tomorrow is pretty much uh, the DC television universe's uh, uh, entry point. It can be the entry point for a lot of things. And the only thing that that I would have to say a negative about Legends of Tomorrow was the main character. I didn't like him. Rip Hunter. Uh, He was the guy who, who put the legends together you know his story you know he's from he's from the future uh the far 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 future and then he goes back in time and gets these uh uh legends together and puts them you know together as a team and eventually they uh when you get to season two i want to say when you get to season two you kind of lose rip hunter and then they bring him back 
And then by the end of the season again, then he, he leaves because he says it looks like the team is gelled together and they don't really need him. And I agree. They don't. They don't need him. <laughs> <laughs> He's annoying. So, so you're saying that Rip, Rip Hunter, he served his purpose, but you know he doesn't really add anything to the, the overall uh, feel of the show. I didn't like his character. Okay. I, I I think they I I didn't like his character. Then the other characters I'm great with. I mean, you know, um, what they did was they took a lot of the other sideline characters from the other shows and they became main characters in Legend. Like you have um, uh, Professor Stein and uh, and uh, Jackson, who, who who you know come together and they make uh, Firestorm which came from the Flash. Mm-hmm. Those characters came from the Flash. You've got uh, White Canary, who came from Arrow. Uh, who else do you have? Uh, uh, Firestorm, White Canary, which is Sarah. Um, like you said, the Hawk Girl and Hawk Girl and Hawkman, they came from uh, Flash. Because Hawk Girl was initially a uh, love interest of Cisco, initially, and that's when they that's when they started to integrate the the, the story with the legends. Because Vandal Savage was the connectivity between the legends and Flash. Vandal Savage was the was the uh, the villain, and he was the villain of the first season of Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, by the time you get to the second season, it's no longer Vandal Savage that they have to deal with, but now it's the Legion of Doom, which the Legion of Doom came from Arrow. Well, for the most part, except for, of course, Reverse Flash, who came from The Flash, okay. who's part of the Legion of Doom, Eobar, Eobar Thawne. <clears throat> Which is a call back to the old Super Friends show for you, for you younger viewers out there, or the younger listeners. Go ahead and break it down for them younger listeners. <laughs> 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 I'll just say, you know, who don't who don't necessarily know anything about the Super Friends? That that was that was me, the, me. the Legion of Doom, the primary uh, villains or, or the uh, primary opposition for the Justice League, aka Super Friends, on the uh, on that particular cartoon, and and it's kind of grown in in years because I, I, I know that they just more or less just came up with the name. <laughs> you know, just just because uh, we needed to have a name for a group and and, and not uh, not infringe on any any copyrights of the DC characters, so they just all right, we'll just call them Legion of Doom. But uh, if, if you want to know where that comes from, that that comes from Challenge of the Super Friends. That was back in 1978. Uh, yes, it's a long time ago, but the Legion of Doom name still kind of lives on. So they they have it. Not to be confused with the Legion of Doom, the wrestlers, the Road Warriors. <coughs> Speaking of the Legion of Doom, it, 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 I don't know if, if anybody, uh, any of the fellow watchers, have caught the nod or the Easter egg that Star Labs plays because there are scenes where Star Labs takes on the look of the old nod to the uh, Justice Justice uh, League Hall of Justice. The same. Oh look. yeah, the building. Yeah, that 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 thing is uh here again, you know, the Hall of Justice. That that's another one of them things that just kind of worked itself into the main continuity of the comic books and whatnot. It's been incorporated into it. So yeah, <laughs> the Hall of Justice. In fact, I think some a lot of that promotional material when they did the invasion thing, Hall of Justice was sitting right there in the background. Yeah, and then I think they did an episode on The Legends of Tomorrow where the Hall of Justice looks like... What was it, what was it in the old TV show where The Legion of Doom was that? It, it was the Hall of Doom. The, the it, Hall of Doom, It was right. a mobile yeah. kind of a dome shape, uh, almost like a flying saucer type deal. But exactly. I, now, it was, which was only, only true, like, people who remember that would catch those nods to... When they show those, uh, so those clips of yeah. the of Star Labs, like in the Flash, okay, Star Labs, it looks like Star Labs, and then 
uh, there's another point where it takes on the the look of the Hall of Justice, and then when there's an episode, you know, you know if you follow the Legends of Tomorrow, where the reality also gets altered in the Legends of Tomorrow, where the Legion of Doom, where it becomes Doom World. So here's another thing about that universe. You have two different story arcs. You have one where there's Flashpoint, where everything changes because of the Flash, and then you also have what's called Doom World, where the Legion of Doom gets a hold of the Spear of Destiny and changes reality. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> but in that reality, when it changes, you see the Hall of Doom. Or yes, yeah, see that that, that there, there's so much stuff to cover as it relates to uh, just the the CW universe and and just comic books in general because you, you almost can't talk about it without talking about everything else. Uh, but the long and short of it is that the you know the the CW universe is. is complex and potentially still growing i mean uh so as as we're kind of wrapping it up uh you did present to me that they were in production uh, i guess technically on a was this a fourth show that they, that they integrated potentially integrated into the arrowverse a, a, a fourth and a fifth a fourth because and a fifth. you have uh black lightning now it's not confirmed yet whether Black Lightning is going to be a part of that CW universe or how it's going to fit into it, but everybody's speculating that it might. And then you also have the coming of the new Titan show, which everybody's excited about. Okay. So those well, are... And they're not, yeah, they're not going to call it Teen Titans because of the fact that you know, a lot of these characters are not going to be teenagers, a a.k.a., as you know, Wally West from uh, The Flash is not a teenager, but he's not as old as Barry and a lot of the, and, and, uh, and um, the Arrow or any of the other characters. You know, he's a young. So, you know, I, I, I guess my assumption would be that they're going to be somewhere, I guess, the younger sidekicks. You know, uh, maybe they'll integrate uh, Roy Harper's speedy character in there from uh, from the Arrow. I can see uh, Kid Flash coming from you know Wally West coming from the Flash. Uh, don't know what. And see, here's the problem: when they add Dick Grayson into this as Nightwing, mm -hmm. there has to be some connectivity to a Batman. Which well, is not, which not brings in the problem so. of whether they're going to add a Robin because they can't really add a Robin, which would be Damian Wayne. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Now they can because reference the, that because man. you know that 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 much they can do. They can always reference it, but I, you know, as, as we said, you know, they may not mention them by name, possibly, but you know, they can always reference the old, you know. I learned from the best, or you know, whatever. You know, I got my tools right. Yeah, you know what I mean. No need for them yeah, to say sort of his like name. Powerless. Because, yeah, not, not, to, not to get out of the CW universe, but to bring in another DC-based uh, show, you have Powerless, mm -hmm. which shows on uh, what, what network is Powerless? NBC. NBC. Yes. NBC. Okay. Now they don't have the rights to Batman, of course. We know it's Fox does. Yeah. But. But some, somehow they are able to reference Batman and Bruce Wayne and Wayne Enterprises. Now, you never see Batman, but you have seen a uh, Batarang. Mm -hmm. They've showed the Batarang and they've, and, they've, and they've mentioned Batman. You've never seen him, and I think you'll never see him. But if you want to be technical, Fox has never showed Batman either. They've showed this little kid that they're calling him Bruce Wayne. Yeah, but and they, and they probably won't show Batman, Batman but you know, not now the difference there is that I think they just own the rights to have it if they want it. Now, is that fair that that they would have it and more or less kind of sit on it, not use it, and and not use it? No, but you know that's that's what they pay for, and you know that and unless some other deal gets worked out, I I don't think that that's gonna uh, go anywhere. But stranger things have happened. I mean, you know, we, we're living in an era now where, believe it or not, you got Marvel Studios, which has basically bought the right back, bought the 
sublease the rights from somebody that they've leased the rights to in the first place, which is ridiculous. But, you know, that's that's the way business yeah. works, man. They leased it out to Sony, and Sony leased the rights back. So, yeah. Well, Sony only did that because well, they needed to. their movie sucked. <laughs> Uh, but you yeah, know, now, now we, won't, we won't go into Amazing Spider-Man two because you know I got some thoughts about Amazing Spider-Man two, and I, I still maintain I think that it was a little bit unfair to to Garfield because I thought he did a fine job, but I, you know that's neither here nor there. Uh, anyway, the, from what I'm reading, Black Lightning is still a a a, uh, a production of Bertolani, which is uh, basically the guy who's or the production company that has housed. Supergirl and Arrow and the Flash and Legends of Tomorrow and you know and all that good stuff. So uh, I guess he's riding, they're riding the wave right now and that they have already got this much stuff going and going good. So let's let's hit it again and let's let's not skip over the fact that we know Luke Cage being successful. Let me see if you about to go where I, oh, I knew you was about to go there. <laughs> <laughs> We know Luke Cage being yeah. successful on Netflix has mm. every reason that this thing is going to it, it reminds you of the 70s, doesn't it, huh? Uh, let's let's uh, put a black guy out there. Hey, man, you know what? They got a black guy. Let's get us a black guy, too. <laughs> yeah, in this case, it's more like, well, who do we own that we can just toss out there real quick? All right, Black Lightning. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we know that's going to We know. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm surprised they went with Black Lightning as opposed to, I thought I heard some years back that they were going to do a Static Shock. But instead of a Static Shock, they're doing Black Lightning. You know, Static Shock would have been would have been nice because they've already established him. They had him on the, uh, the cartoon some years ago. So, it's, so he's not as unheard of a character as I guess previously when he was just the comic book thing and they and they weren't officially DC they were they were milestone comics being uh, mm-hmm. distributed by DC but now they're owned by DC and and, and you know they're, they're part of that universe so I mean I would have liked to have seen it I thought that I think that Static Shock as a character was probably is about as close to just the I know this is going to sound like an odd comparison, but the the early incarnation of Spider-Man as you were going to get in that Spider-Man when he was first introduced was the teenage hero trying to fit in with all of the uh, the major heroes back in you know back in his era, which is pretty much what Static Shock was. He was just a teenage kid trying to fit in with all these heroes around him who were more established and stronger and this that and the other. But he had to use his brains to kind of succeed, whereas this straight up power wouldn't do it. Mm. But you know, again, hey, if they're gonna do Black Lightning, I'm fine with Black Lightning. I, I'll get a series of shot. But that is the 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 next. Leg I'm gonna tell you like universe. this. I'm gonna tell you like this. Because just like you said, I'm willing to give it a shot too. And you know why I'm willing to give it a shot? Well, because know. of Marvel. So DC needs to thank Marvel because Marvel has done a excellent job at taking B and C list comic characters and turning them into mainstream heroes. So for most people who don't know about black lightning, if DC and CW do a good job with it, it could make black lightning a major character as Marvel has done with daredevil Luke Cage, Doctor Strange. I mean, you know, we can, we, you know, you can, you can go on. Going on and on and on with that. <laughs> okay, all right, well, well, there we have it, folks. That that is the the run of uh, the the CW universe, or at least our our quick review of it. Which, ultimately speaking, if you haven't sat and watched it, if you're a comic book fan, you have you owe it to yourself to at least pick one or two shows out of the four to watch i mean uh, I, I i other than seasons one of arrow i mean i can't say that they've all been bad because i've gone this sporadically and again i'm gonna say that you know 
all of these shows are streaming somewhere. So I've gone back and looked at it retroactively on Arrow. And, and, and I can't say that those later seasons are bad. I actually enjoyed them. They, you know, he, he has a, a nice adventure that, that, that goes on. And it's a, a lot less built around let me take on the local crime lord and you know and the technology that they've acquired or whatnot uh with with him kind of being integrated into a superhero universe he has he has superhero problems somewhat so if you haven't taken the time and yeah and i know it's a lot of content out there there's a lot of tvs a lot of content a lot of different various things and in fact that they're, they're probably they are i'm not even gonna say probably they're more uh legs to the the DC television universe that kind of connects somewhat through the you know the uh, CW universe than we're covering right now, but those aren't really big legs, so we're not going to talk about that. Um, but you owe it to yourself. And yeah, and my yeah, my suggestion is you know for anybody out there, like I said, I personally didn't watch all of that, but I would I am definitely going to go back. So I would suggest start if you haven't start with Arrow, go to Flash, then go to uh, Supergirl, then go to Legends of Tomorrow, and you know it's one long you know it's it, you, and you'll see how the universe intertwines and you'll get wrapped up in it, especially by the time you get to Flash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we know that you the, the the biggest advocate for the Flash and and all that stuff. But and yeah, if you if you're somebody that just wants to see the the, the superhero conflict. Flash is probably where you want to start. <laughs> you know that they start off a superhero conflict from episode one. I think was it Weather Wizard that he that he took on, if I remember correctly, in the, in the first episode. So, you know that that right there, that that tells the tale. It, it, there is no let me start off with the small people and kind of work my way up. He he starts right. You know he starts off running. So, no pun intended. That so there you have it. I will repeat, if you are a comic book fan and you haven't looked at it, you owe it to yourself to kind of look at at least at least a good two of them. And if I'm going to suggest two out of the four, I'm going to say Flash, Flash and Supergirl. I'm going to say Flash and Supergirl. Okay, what, and if I had two, I would say I would say Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. Okay. Because they have, and, and the reason I say that, because they have the biggest, those two shows have the biggest impact on the reality of the universe. Okay. So. Now, I now I do say uh, Supergirl uh, for, A, it, it is a standalone, and it works as a standalone, and I, will, and I will put it out there that I felt that the crossover in that show felt a lot more special in my view. And uh, centering on season one, because, I, you know, I, I'm still iffy about season two. But centering on season one, I thought that the the line of storytelling that they had there, I thought they did a great job in kind of getting her from point A to point B, from intrepid, nervous, nerdy, I don't know what I'm doing, to, okay, I got my, you know, I got my wings underneath me now. I'm a hero and I, and I can handle this. So don't you know that those are my things, and much like the Flash, it's not like you really have a lot of low-level criminals that that she was dealing with there. That there, there is the element of the fight. You can get around the the relationship stuff that that takes place in that. Yeah, it's it's in there, and, and they they intertwine. Uh, I, I love him. She he loves her. This that and the other. But it didn't feel as overwhelming as it became in season two. In my view, right, you're right. So yeah, that's I it. Agree. That, that, those, those are my suggestions. Mr. Green suggests Supergirl and the Flash. Doom suggests uh, Legends of Tomorrow and the Flash. Legends of Tomorrow and Flash. Either way, Flash is a is a pretty solid pick, and I think that we all agree that we all gotta go back and watch. We all agree that we all gotta go back and watch Arrow. Yeah, gotta go back and watch Arrow. Gotta, gotta get that in there. <laughs> so that, that I think that's gonna gonna cover that. I think we got a, a lot of uh, ground on the CW stuff and uh, that's a, a good way to I think launch a new podcast uh, talking about some of the, the good, the bad, and the ugly even though we didn't really I didn't, I didn't really crap on it too hard but I will say 
going into the next episode, which I, you know, I've, I've kind of pulled out of the hat. And they're going to talk about the franchise reboot of the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters 2016, which is the all-female cast. That is the next episode up. So if you got some some opinions oh, and questions and comments about uh, the Ghostbusters, leave that wherever you uh, happen to be listening to this. I know it's a pretty polarizing movie, uh, one way or the other. But we, but it was, not, it, was it, it had its, its moments. But I will say it's not going to necessarily just be all Ghostbusters 2016 because you can't really talk about that without talking about Ghostbusters 1, 2, and possibly the animated series before you get off into the uh, reboot because you got you to gotta know where it started to know where it went to. So that is the next thing. That is next up on the list. I hope you uh, be sure to come back and tune in for that. If you are wanting to make sure that you catch these things, please be sure to hit the like button. It ain't going to hurt you. You know, you're not going to lose any money for hitting the like or the follow or subscribe, wherever you happen to be. Uh, so you want to click that and at least pop up in your line and you'll get the notification that something new is going along. So you can uh, join in and make your comments or you can correct me if I'm wrong or you can just say it. I don't know what I'm talking about, whichever one doesn't bother me. So that's that. Right. Anyway, <laughs> so there we have it, folks. We appreciate you listening to this Movies and Stuff podcast i want you to catch us on the next go around and we will see you then take care everybody <laughs>